Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed your lunch. So before lunch, we talked about food. After lunch, what did we talk about? Sleep. <laughs> I'm delighted that we're joined by Michael Rosbash, who was one of the 2017 Nobel laureates in physiology or medicine for unraveling the molecular mechanisms underpinning our circadian rhythms. So he's going to join me for a conversation on stage. Michael, please. I think it, you're over there, please. Thank you. I think it's a little risky putting pictures of pillows up when people have had a nice meal, hopefully a nice meal. So we're all aware that a good night's sleep is good for us, but uh, you, working on fruit flies, found out some of the drivers of our body rhythms, and those fruit flies mechanisms turned out to be transferable, if you like, to humans, that, there was, that evolution has preserved those systems. What do we know about how important sleep is for our health? Let's start there. So th there, are, there, are two, uh, th there are two broad aspects of the problem of sleep. There's why we sleep, and there's how we sleep. And, and uh, I, I think... In some ways, the, 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 the why question is more interesting, perhaps because it's, it's less understood. Uh, so I, different people have different views on this question, not surprisingly, but in, in my opinion, I, I don't think we really understand why we sleep, what is the deep function of sleep, what does sleep do? In other words, saying that it's, it's important and that we feel terrible without it and it causes problems doesn't really tell you why. It just tells you it's important. Uh, and so, and, and people disagree on this topic because in some ways the things which don't work well when you don't sleep are, are so profound that it's almost as if we understand why we sleep, but I think we really don't. What, what metabolic process, what profound molecular gear doesn't work well when we don't sleep? I, I don't think there's a well agreed upon answer in the scientific community in the same way that there's an agreed upon mechanism which underlies circadian rhythms. So let, let, I'll come back a bit to the, what, what, uh, what, what goes wrong or what societal uh, implications uh, unfold as a consequence of poor sleep. But I think the, the how of sleep is, is um, a, a better understood problem, at least part of it. So there, there's a, a, a circadian component, a time of day component to sleep, uh, as you implied, uh, the, the mid-afternoon slump. Um, and, and that's really because this inexorable ticking, this metronome-like clock that we all carry around that ticks away and, and makes us maximally alert in the morning, most of us, and, and a depression in the, in, in the afternoon, and then uh, another period of alertness in the early evening, and then by 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock, we're very sleepy. So that's a, that's a very regular process which, which occurs almost without interruption in almost everyone, and I use the word almost all the time because there is heterogeneity in the human population just, just uh, along with uh, really everything one, one chooses to measure. And we, could, and we could start with my teenager there who is completely shifting. And, 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 and I, I wouldn't call that so much exceptions, but just as aging has an impact on this, that um, older people are different from younger people. The teenagers are maximally different. Um, and, and that's, again, almost universal. Um, but almost means there's occasionally an exception. So, so there's this circadian pattern. And, and then there is a, a second control system um, which operates, which is uh, called the homeostatic system. 
And, and that mysterious word simply means something is keeping track of how much sleep we've had and how much sleep we need and whether we're well rested or poorly rested. So I got off an airplane uh, from the United States a couple of days ago. And so I am, I am suffering from sleep deprivation. And when you are sleep deprived, you sleep longer and you sleep deeper. And so that's a, that is, you're, you're making up for lost sleep. But again, you, you, can, you can ask a more, a deeper question, well, what is keeping track? How does that work? And we really don't know. We don't know what molecules do it. Uh, we don't know what part of the brain, or indeed if it's only the brain, which is keeping track of this. So the circadian system, we know where it is, we know how it works, that's why I'm here, because we figured that out in fruit flies and it turned out uh, humans work in exactly the same way with the same molecules, but the homeostatic system is still a mystery. And so the, 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 the real world consequences of this, both um, for chronobiology and for sleep are, are the following, more or less. So chronotype. This is early birds and night owls. So early birds have a slightly earlier clock. Night owls have a later clock. Um, as I said, aging people uh, move on the earlier side as they get older. Uh, younger people uh, have a later and have the later chronotype. And are there health differences between those two chron are there health differences between those two chronotypes? It's a natural broadly? it's it's a natural evolution. So no health differences that that, that one can discern. However, um, early birds who are forced to be night owls, or more commonly, night owls who were first forced to be early birds. There, there are health consequences. So, for example, um, everyone in the Western world operates on a, a time system which is not necessarily in harmony with our natural clocks. So, alarm clocks, six in the morning, they ring, and you, you, you've gone to bed at perhaps a bit later than you should have, and so that tends to disrupt your natural systems. And so the, the, uh, the, the fact is that on Saturday and Sunday, on Saturday morning and Sunday morning, people actually sleep. They go to bed later and they sleep later. So that, that turns out to be a manifestation of sleep deprivation mm. because you simply shifted your clock. So the, the fact of the matter is that there is mild sleep deprivation in the entire world because of a disconnect between natural chronotype and, the, and the, the practical world that we have to live in. More extreme, I might add, for teenagers who have to get up at that hour and who have gone to bed at two in the morning. Well, just yeah, t telling, telling him that it's bad for his health to get up in the morning is just gonna make matters worse, so we'll keep this quiet. But, but if, we cra if, we, if we focus on how circadian biology really impacts health through, um, um, for instance, the, the cycling of drug targets and, the, uh, and the, the, the action of drugs and drug half-lives, for instance. So, so the, there, there is a, a growing interest in trying to match um, therapy drugs, for instance, and even, even uh, something like chemotherapy um, with, with time of day application. So some of this has been circumvented by having drugs which have a very long half-life. They live in your system for a long time. And consequently, they persist and, and there's not as much of a problem um, with, with drugs that disappear early. But nonetheless, most people, for instance, in, 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 uh, in the US, I'd say a very large fraction of the middle and upper middle class population takes statins for cholesterol therapy. And, and, and that is advised to be taken in the evening because that's when the target is maximally active. That target of that drug undergoes very dramatic time of day oscillation in the liver, and consequently, it's maximally effective to take the drug 
at the time when the target is, is maximally vulnerable. And so there's, there's interest in this kind of problem. Um, there's some recent literature as, as a fruit fly geneticist, you can imagine I haven't had much to do with chemotherapy, but uh, as a professional, um, but, but I pay attention to the literature and there is a growing interest in, 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 some, of, in some of this work. Um, uh, immunotherapy for cancer, for instance, is very recent results suggesting that that time of day application is, is, is important. So that's a, that's a consideration. And you'll hear a little bit, I think, about uh, feeding time. Um, as a, as a not, not so much with respect to pathology, but with respect to optimal performance and, and even sort of how we live, uh, et cetera, feeding fasting cycles. Mm. But if, if you wanted to pinpoint in the sort of cl closing stages of this discussion, if you wanted to pinpoint the ways in which you think that circadian rhythms interact most profoundly with health, what would you say? Well, I think, I think a, a <clears throat> being well rested, um, getting a good night's sleep, uh, for instance, a, a, um, a, a, a not very well-known fact is that um, sleep deprivation, chronic sleep deprivation, and by that I mean the one or two hours, too little sleep that many of us get every night. Um, so a very, very common phenomenon in the Western world. Uh, that, that has a bigger influence on traffic deaths than alcohol does, much bigger. Um, people falling asleep at the wheel, um, driving wheel. And so, and so uh, I, I think getting a good night's sleep and, and actually trying as best as possible to have your natural rhythm um, in, in, in sync with the kind of life you lead. Now that, that's a tall order for many people because they're... they're it's a tall, tall order for us, but imagine the, the populations that were being talked about this morning, Syria and Gaza, for instance. Right, so, so, mean, so some of these considerations are, are very Western-centric um, because, for example, if, if, you're, if you're talking to a, a bunch of upper-middle-class or middle-class kids in the U.S., you're talking about good sleep habits, having a dark room, no noise, um, the lighting or the absence of lighting, the, the various circadian considerations that are important. And as, as you appreciate, of course, in the third world, in much of the world, um, noise, uh, sleep, many people in a room with different kinds of, of um, demands on them. So, it, so this is very much um, a, a Western, a Western preoccupation, but but you know that's a, a famous Boston politician said said uh, all, all all politics is local, uh, and and by that I mean you begin you begin with your local environment and try to do as best you can um, in that kind of a, in in those circumstances. Thank you. And just to close, thinking of your local environment. What does a well-rested fruit fly look like as opposed to an unwell-rested fruit fly? So, so it, you will, you will be, be uh, surprised to hear that sleep in fruit flies is exactly the same as humans. So, for example, an old fruit fly wakes up several times in the morning <laughs> and has trouble getting enough Good sleep, just like I do. <laughs> Somehow it's comforting that we're in sync with nature. Yeah. Michael, thank you very You're much. You're welcome, Adam. Thank you. So.